right, let's look at lesson two, laying out web pages. And we're going to look at some actual tags that you would use to make pages have a little more than just a title bar. So first off, I'm going to open up a new document. Um, as always, I will delete the unnecessary files, the things that we do not need. And I'm going to go ahead and just call this lesson two demo. Of course, you do not necessarily need to do anything for this lesson. Uh, right now other than to watch me talk about it. So here we go. Um, in this particular part of the lesson, we're going to talk about building a web page in the body. So a lot of this won't make a lot of sense until we get to later lessons when we actually start using colors and things. But just bear with me for a second, okay? Many web pages are divided into sections. And a lot of times those sections are different colors or you have like a heading banner at the top and then some content and then like a little footer at the bottom so like think three drawers you know like a chest of drawers in your bedroom that you keep your socks and your underwear and your t-shirts in think of them each as drawers so in the body of our web page you don't have to but often you'll put things in their own little drawers now they're invisible drawers but it basically keeps things organized, so to speak. So in the lesson here in your book, what we do is we look at setting up for the Mickey page that we're making our general plan, which is going to be to have four sections in the body. And I draw a picture here for you. We're going to have a header section. We're going to have a footer section. And then we're going to have a middle section, which we call main here. And then Within main, well, beside main, it's going to float over here, we're going to have the aside, which is kind of like where you might put buttons and stuff like that. So think Amazon. you got a header at the top, a little footer at the bottom, like some buttons over on the side, and then you've got everything else. It's kind of set up like that. Now, you're not going to see it. These are invisible, okay? Until we learn to do styles, you won't be able to make them pretty or look different or anything like that. So we're just going to kind of get into the habit of putting certain parts of our page in these so i'm going to make a section here called header and then maybe like a middle section called main and then a little bottom section called footer and again this in and of itself doesn't do anything it's just for organization purposes but later on we can use those to make it pretty okay so what would we put in a header well it's the part that's at the top of the page so headings would go in a header. Not to be confused with our snowman's head, which doesn't show on the page at all. So we have like the head and the body section. In the body at the top, we have a header, just like on a page in Word, we might have a header, right, on the actual page. And then in that header, we're gonna have a heading. So remember headings can be bigger, but not necessarily, depends on what size they are. But they are always bold, okay? So I'm just going to put, this is a heading, turn it off, and I'm going to run so we can see that we have a heading at the top, okay? And maybe I have a subheading. So say I want to have a smaller heading. I might make it an H4, subheading, okay? And I'll run. So we have a big heading and we have a little heading, and that's all like our header. It's the top of our page. It's the important stuff. And when we get fancy in web pages, it's also going to be like pictures, all that good fun stuff. All right. And then down in the footer is where we might have a little paragraph, like a little paragraph that's like, you know, that copyright information, copyright 2020 or whatever, you know, just a little paragraph down there, okay? But in the middle, that's going to be like the meat of the page. That's going to be like all the good stuff. And that's where we're going to put most of the things that I'm going to talk about here in this chapter. But just to understand that we can build this chest of drawers, our invisible drawers, that later on will turn into fancy things, pretty things, colorful things. All right, let's look at some of the tags here. By the way, these are called semantic elements. They're pre-named semantic layout tags because later on when you start styling them, you call them by their name and you say, hey, header, you're going to be shaded red. Hey, footer, you're also going to be shaded red. Hey, main, you're not going to be shaded at all, but you are going to have red letters or whatever. So the pre-named semantic layout tags, remember semantic means that the tag identifies the purpose of the tag. So 
that section has a purpose. That section that's at the top is the header. It's the important header information. And the foot, like we understand if we're in Word, what a header is and what a footer is. And so some of these other things that are in here, uh, like the main is the main part of the page. The nav would be the navigation or the buttons on a page. So there's other ones in here that we'll learn about later on. So they're not like all in all required, but eventually it's going to keep our page neat and tidy. All right, new tags for this unit. We've talked about some of them already. Uh, we've already talked about headings. Headings make words heavier and they're going to set them apart on the page. We call anything that puts a blank line. So you see how there's a blank line here and a blank line here? We call those things block elements. Think like building blocks. Building blocks go one on top of each other. You don't like put a building block inside of a building block. So same thing here, except these building blocks, it's like they have this invisible padding around them because they actually do have invisible padding around them. So headings have invisible padding around them and paragraph tags have invisible padding around them. So there's always going to be gaps between those. And that's why you can't put them inside each other because they're automatically going to have a gap when you insert the next one. Okay, so headings are not necessarily bigger. Some of them are smaller. They're always bold and they're block elements. So they're going to have a gap or a pad around them. Okay. The next one here is called, well, we have paragraphs. We've talked about paragraph tags. So right now it's either a heading or it's a paragraph, or it can be this other thing here, which is a block quote. Now you're not going to appreciate a block quote unless I have lots of text on the page. So let me put in a paragraph. Lots of text is here. Yay. And I'm just going to copy and paste this numerous times so that we have a decent amount of text. Okay. All right. I don't know if that's going to be a decent amount or not, but we'll see. So there's a paragraph. Okay, there it is. Not really the biggest. Let's make this window smaller so it looks like it's bigger. Um, I don't know if you can see all of that. Let me scoot my window over a little bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to do that same thing, but instead of using paragraph tags, I'm going to use the tag called block quote. By the way, I'm just using keyboard shortcuts. Control C is copy. So instead of right clicking, because it just takes too much time, I press Control C. And instead of right clicking to paste, I press Control V. Okay. All right. Now, so I have a paragraph and then I have a block quote. Otherwise, they're identical. I'm going to hit run. Let's look and see. So see the difference? A block quote is going to be indented on the left and on the right. It's indented from both sides. So it's not tabbed, right? A tab is just the first line. And it's not indented because an indent would just scoot it over. We use the increase indent button in Word, it scoots the whole paragraph over. But it doesn't mess with that other side of the paragraph. Block quote pushes it in from both sides. So it's just a paragraph that's indented from both sides. And a lot of times it's used, um, like in newspapers, it's used for quotes. Like they'll have the quote and it'll be bigger and bolder and maybe italics. And it'll be set in from both sides. So that is block quote. Another one is HR. So you're going to notice there's no closing tag for HR. HR stands for horizontal rule. Horizontal, that's like horizon line, straight. Rule, which is a fancy word for a line, like what you use a ruler for drawing a line. So a horizontal rule, watch when I press run, puts a line in there. See that? And if I put a horizontal rule in my footer above my paragraph, bam, we got one there. So that's a horizontal rule, a line. Now, let's not confuse HR with BR. BR is also an empty tag. It doesn't have a pair. And a BR stands for line break, which is an enter, but it's an enter inside of one of those block elements. So it's an enter inside of a heading or a paragraph or a block quote. It's basically a time when we say, hey, go to the next line, but don't put one of those big gaps. Okay, let's look at the difference here. If I have this heading up here at the top, I have subheading, right? So let me put in a heading three and put my name and then turn it off and then I'll put another heading three in my name and turn it off. I'll just put it all in one line. So that's going to be on two lines, right? Okay, what if I make one heading three 
And then I put a BR between them. So now it says heading three, line break, and then Tanya again. Now notice we don't have that gap. So it's like a little enter inside the block that puts it on the next line. So there's no big gap. See the gap above my name and the gap below both names, but not a gap between the names. A line break is not going to have that padding. And you have to use a line break inside your block element. So I could use it in my paragraph. If after the word here, I wanted this to go to the next line, I could put a BR just right here. And then notice it skips here and it goes to the next line. It doesn't matter how I make my page. See, it stops right there and it goes to the next line because that's a line break. All right, that's line break. All right, we've already talked in class at least about using the strong tag to bold words and the EM tag to italicize words. So you should already be familiar with those. Just remember you can also use those inside headings just keep them nested properly so that would make the second version of my name in italics now i can't do anything with strong on headings because headings are automatically bold okay but i could come here and make this bold strong and then turn it off remember when it pops up you can press tab we'll hit run and there we go beautiful okay so that's strong and em you can also use B or I, but they preference that we should use strong or EM. All right, the last two on here, one is called a div. We're not going to really use divs yet much, but divs are a way to divide your page like we did for header, main, and footer, except you can name them what you want. So I could have a div, like instead of using the word header, I'm just going to put it above it, but you wouldn't have both of these. I could say div ID equals, and I could say top part. And then instead of header, I would have div, and I would get rid of this line and this line. And then I have a thing called top part up there. That's all that is. It's basically a semantic element from before we had semantic elements. <laughs> so we get to name them what we wanted to. And then you have to style them to do whatever it is you want them to do. Okay? So we'll get to those later on. Just know that they exist and that you can name them whatever you want. The final one on here is called pre, which is pre-formatted text. It kind of looks like typewriter text. So it's kind of in a funny font, and every letter is the exact same width. So you would only really want to do this if you're trying to line stuff up. So for instance, um, let's say I make a pre-formatted text block right here. And underneath it now, I'm going to say one space bar space bar space bar and tanya and then oops oh my look i made a i made a thing two space bar space bar space bar another tanya okay and then three space bar space bar space bar third one okay whatever and then i'm going to turn that off okay now normally space bars don't mean anything so like right here, I could space bar after the word yay, and I could space bar a whole bunch of times. But when I hit run, there will still never be more than one space bar. It doesn't recognize more than one space bar. The only time it recognizes more than one space bar is if you're using pre-formatted text blocks. And a pre-formatted text, text block is going to look exactly like you put it on the page. So we can space bar, we can enter. See, I didn't put BR here or a BR here or a BR anywhere because when I hit enter, because it's in a pre-formatted text block, it just stays that way. But it's going to be in kind of a funny little font because that's just what they are. That's how they work. The other thing that does not matter in HTML is enters. I could enter this thing way down here, all these lines. And if I hit run and scroll down, it's still never going to be more than one enter. Matter of fact, this is just a space bar because it was in the middle of a paragraph, so it doesn't even go to the next line. So um, just remember, space bars and enters don't mean anything. You can hit enter 300 times and it's still not even going to enter because if you don't BR it in the middle of it, it's not going to go down. It's just not. Um, and then same thing with space bars. 
it's going to space bar one time. And if you space bar 3,000 times, it's still going to space bar one time because that's how it works. All right. And that's pretty much the gist of the new material. Um, we've already talked about nesting, so you know about placing them in the proper order. Um, and then the rest of this lesson is pretty much just going to be to add some additional items to your Mickey page. So there you go. That is a recap for lesson number two for coding the web, laying out the web page, and some new tags.